Today we're going to simplify a house portrait, so if you have one commissioned, stay tuned. Let's get started. This is my house, but that doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the no tan. We're going to put in the darks and leave the whites completely alone. Now I have used masking fluid in this case, which I almost never use, but when it comes to architecture or something that's man-made that has a hard edge and it's gonna be white or white-ish, then I'm gonna use masking fluid. So that's already put on. It's put around the window trims and a couple of places along the roof. And that's so I can lay in this triad wash easily. The triad wash, if you look at the photograph, you can see that the front of the house is darker than the side of the house. So I'm putting in my dark triad. That's ultramarine blue, a little bit of a permanent rose, and then I'm going to put some Naples yellow in there too. Now the reason for picking a blue, a red, and a yellow are because when they come together, they'll read as a gray. They're going to look like purple for quite a while in this painting, but for right now, I just need them to be darker than the side of the house. So that's what's going in here. And I'm able to use my number 12 brush. This is Arsh's uh, cold press paper. Well, yeah, cold press. And, um, and so along I go. All I'm doing is looking at the photograph and anything that's dark as compared to anything that's light. I'm laying in my darks and I'm going to lay them in in as, in as few strokes as possible, and I'm using three colors in order to do it. And in a second, I'm going to also sh I'm going to show you a brief demonstration of how to put these three colors. Maybe I should switch that around and put that at the front. I think I will. I think I'll put it at the front of this video instead. So there you can clearly see ultramarine blue, the pr crimson permanent uh, rose, and a little bit of the Naples yellow. Again, if you put three primary colors together, they'll neutralize each other and turn into a gray. But I'm not going to mix a gray. I mean, that would have been a choice. I could have put the three together and mixed a gray. And I'm sure you've seen house portraits that do that, but that's not what I want to do here. I want to use three colors to cover all that ground. That's what I do when I'm talking about um, Mix for color, I mix for color, I've got my three colors going and mass for value. There's a value of that whole side of the house I put in. It's one dark value made up of three colors. So that's when I sign up, that it is uh, mix, for, mix for color, mass for value, or the other way around, mass for value, mix for color. Now I'm gonna show a, a short demo of what we just did. So I've got my ultramarine blue, my permanent rose, and some uh, Naples yellow. They've been corrupted a little bit. They were cleaner when I started. And now there's the, the blue, a little bit of that red, and the Naples yellow along the bottom where it's starting to coalesce into a gray. So there, I used three colors in order to make a mass. Instead of mixing them together and making one gray. Now I'm gonna bring the picture back that I'm working on. And this is what I would call the no tan. The no tan is, is there a balance of darks against lights? meaning whites against uh, blacks. Black in this case is going to be my purples. You can already identify that this is going to be the picture of a house. If I didn't have this mass that identifies this as being a form that's probably going to be a house, things can get pretty confusing. So it's important to find a photograph that has clear value pattern differences that you can plug into. Here's an example where I want to put, I know the chimney is slightly red, so I'm going to mix a red. I've checked with my value finder to make sure it's the same value as the front of the house. And so that was just ultramarine blue with a little bit of that permanent rose in it. And that's, but again, that, it's a small detail, but I checked it to make sure it was the same value as the front of the house because that's what's happening in the picture. Not the same color as what's in the picture, but the same value as what's in the picture. Now, I think I dry it in a second because you can see there's an even darker area that is where that porch goes in a little bit. And I'm gonna address this that now. And what I've done is I've added a little bit of indigo blue to my mix. So it's indigo blue and a little bit of that permanent rose. And again, a little bit of the Naples yellow because I wanna go a little bit darker. I have to be careful here because there are what look like whites in that space, but they're not whites because anything in the in the shade, even if it's the local color of white, it can't be white. So I'm doing some what they call negative painting here in order to make it appear as if those were some white windows underneath that, that uh, porch shape. 
And now, since I'm really confident that that's the right value that I want to use for the other parts of windows that appear to be dark, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But I'm checking it. See, I put it next to what those value dabs that I've done so far. You can see it's darker. The reason it's darker is because there's indigo in there. Indigo is a step darker than that ultramarine blue. So I'm going to put that in. Now, it's indigo mixed with some ultramarine blue and probably a little bit of that permanent rose as well. I very seldom will use a, paint, a color right from the tube. Not saying I never do, but seldom. And now I'm going to put in what's going to be in those windows later. Now this is just the dark side of the house, and probably when, as I continue to work on this picture, it's probably going to end up being a lot darker. I'm probably going to put another wash in at some point, but for right now, since I'm all I have to compare it to is the white of the paper, it looks quite dark. It probably isn't. But I'll be able to make those decisions as I paint along. It's going to really be important to see what the greens are later and how they register. Checking their value against the value of that side of the house. So that's what we're doing today. <laughs> this is just putting in the no tan, meaning the dark patterns and leaving the whites of the paper white. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint wet, mask for value, mix for color. So you can clearly see what that's going to be a picture of. And you can see where the three colors come together and where they separate, which is something that watercolor does so well. All right, see you next time. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Bye-bye.